Hello, it's January the 30th, and I'm here to make another video on my astrology channel, although today I'm going to be focusing on some of the more philosophical topics, namely I started a video where I was reading from Byung Chul Han, this book called The Scent of Time, and I finished that book. And I've got a bunch more Byung Chul Han books that I've purchased that I've got lined up to read. And I feel like before I load up my mind with more Byung Chul Han, I need to at least um, deal with the video, with the kind of thread, the train of thought that I started anyways. Um, and the certain... Because I, I think I would read from that chapter and then not go too much into the commentary, but just do a reading. And I've been kind of thinking about that as I finish the book. And, um, because it is, it, it feels very relevant to me. I just like to get into that. Um, so first of all, there's certain principles, like how you relate to time, how you relate to life, um, and I'd like to start with talking about the whole thing of Carpe Diem. Carpe Diem, seize the day, right? Seize the day. Don't let any moment go to waste, right? You could do, this is something that they taught, that uh, Byung Chul Han kind of goes into the, this kind of Protestant work ethic kind of thing where it's kind of sinful to let time just kind of like time always has to be used productively. Right. Um, and that, um, so there's this thing that goes with, uh, how you're using your time, how we relate to time, how we, uh, relate to like how, how, do, how you plan your year? How do you relate to one year different than another year and all those kind of stuff. And what I love about astrology is that astrology is kind of like it, 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 the hand doesn't really go right into talking about astrology, but astrology tends to have such a bad reputation, unfortunately, that I think if you're a serious intellectual that like, you know, Carl Jung was really into astrology, but he had to hide it because it wasn't, it wasn't approved by the intellectual community. And it's always, this is the kind of thing that there's a lot of people that might be, um, well, I don't know. I watched a video of, with a guy trying to talk about the sci you know, doing science with solar flares and naturalistic phenomenon and stuff like this, right? That they, they, they did on the astrology podcast recently. Um, whereas I tend to go for more of the oracular uh, synchronicity kind of approach that's not just hung up on mechanical causality explaining how astrology works. Um, but um, but the whole thing, credibility of astrology, that astrology is often not really taken seriously and so I don't know about like I don't I I like this young gel hand stuff and I hope that I'm not doing him such a disfavor by being uh in, into astrology and then reading this particular piece of work from the point of view of an astrologer but I think a lot of the images that he's talking about such as points of light versus like a constellation right that if we're viewing everything as individual points of light then there's a lot of blackness there's a lot of darkness between each individual point of light and that by viewing points of light as being connected into a constellation then there's a sense of an underlying pattern that goes throughout the whole thing and actually with then you put it into the ring of the zodiac uh as is the um I was kind of funny. I watched this video on the the esoteric reading of Sonic Hedgehog, right? And the, how the, he collects the rings or whatever. I guess it also might relate to the Lord of the Rings. I'm playing Elden Ring now, but the ring, you know, the loot. It's also in Zen. They often make the big circle shape and stuff like this, right? The the men and Young talks about the mandala, you know. So we have the wheel of fortune and we have the zodiac wheel and the wheel of samsara and all these wheels, right? Um, and so you get into this thing that it's less about the, um, less about 
Carpe Diem is more like looking at each moment you have. We only have this one life to live. YOLO. <laughs> so, and like today, seize the day, right? Like the, the, I often, there's this kind of attitude that goes with Carpe Diem also that it's also on one hand, it's kind of like the, the, the Protestant work ethic of Carpe Diem is like not to let any time go to waste because it's sort of like sinful of sloth, being the sloth, and that each, that you have to be industrious with your life. You have to like work, be a hard worker and not just sort of enjoy yourself because the enjoyment is reserved to heaven or something like that, right? But the thing is, if you take away that whole thing about enjoyment being, you know, you reserve your enjoyment for some afterlife and the hereafter, then the other thing is like, okay, well, we have to get our enjoyment. It's either hell on earth or you make, earth your heaven you make earth your bliss or whatever right and we don't believe in an afterlife but then that happens is that you only have carpe diem right we only have this one moment this one life to live these this one and there's no and, and there, if there's no constellation there's no pinning it to a, a a overarching pattern it's basically um whatever you can get with no limits as as fast as you can get it in this moment, winner takes all. And like, what does it start to sound like, right? It sounds to sound a little bit like a really kind of like competitive, aggressive form of capitalism, maybe, right? Um, and I was kind of looking at some memes or whatever that I that you see on, you know, I mean, maybe memes you shouldn't take too seriously, but it, if you look at the way humor works, right? The humor, the joking about astrology being like, you know, you don't want to use astrology to, um, the problem about using astrology to justify all the ways that we don't want to grow and develop and evolve and progress and all this kind of stuff. And, but if you look at that claim, what it suggests is that it's, you're holding on to a stubborn kind of resistance in the face of submitting to uh, something that's obviously better than the stubborn resistance. What, what's better than the stubborn resistance is growth, right? But the thing is, growth only, if you look into this Jungian stuff, growth is only relative, relativized in relation to limitation and the inevitable, um, you know, ending of growth or growth only a tree grows but only grows so large you know what i mean it's like there's, growth only takes you so far and especially with uh, in capitalism there is no actual um like the principle of unlimited growth is only sustained by the by these natural limitations like a tree that cannot grow so far or like an an atmosphere that can only take so much pollution or or you know or there are certain limit organic limitations that unlimited growth must adhere to in order so that that the principle of unlimited growth is not absolute it's only it's only ever a relativized growth right and so that but essentially what, what astrology does is it places growth and it places limitation and it places these kinds of things within a, the mandala, which is of a higher order than the one, rel you know, it's like if you have a video game controller and you have, you know, a, a button that says duck and a button that says jump, you're going to need both buttons and go left and right to navigate your map, right? And, and to to suggest that that in every option you only advance or you only ever grow is kind of a silly way, way to look at life. But in in if you take away the map of life, right? If you take away the the the, uh, the underpinning of it, there's this kind of, there's a sense of being in a kind of a, the nihilistic void of modernity where there isn't really you know what when you get up in the morning and you live your life and you could live your life this way or you could live your life another way you know you could live on this country or you could live in another country you could live with the people you're living with or you could live with different people or you know the whole existential thing what you know if, if everything isn't fate it's all up to a choice then what makes any per choice really that much better than another choice and 
do you have to do anything a certain way at all? If it, it like, if we live in a society that, you know, everything's kind of just relative and it doesn't really matter, then like, who cares, right? Like, what? Why don't you just do what you want to do, right? Um, and so there's this kind of thing about astrology, in that the narrative of modern life is that is this kind of thing that life is entirely what you make of it, and that if there's if there's some, you the the problem of this the difficulties of reality by attributing them to something that's fated by difficult transits or something like that you know critics of astrology will put that down in terms of you know a, wor a world where m the meaning or the situation is all entirely what you make of it so that if any failure to maximize the play because ex especially the whole pleasure thing right because it's either it's either you sacrifice to work right in this protestant work ethic thing where it's like you're you're kind of turning work you know the religion of not looking for pleasure but you know doing noble things for the greater good or something like that versus if it's if really there's no nothing there's no greater reward and it's all just what you can get then in and there's no also no order of when to do things. Do I do it now? Do I do it later? Or how to order my life? The sort of structure my life. If there's no structure, then it's basically like do what you want, get what you want. Anything goes all the time. And but if you can't do that, the only person to blame is yourself. And but there's the only way to make that better is basically to spend money on upgrading yourself so you can be the person who just does everything they want whenever they want and, and any limit just gets smashed by the machine of capitalism that you f you feed like the coins into it like it's an arcade game or something right like um that's basically like the the kind of the nihilistic secular modernity um but one there, there's like um yeah i don't know So um, what I'm kind of arguing for is a um, the, the the whole the whole point of view of also of like turning astrology into something that's always about growth or always about evolution or always about you know the kind of this therapeutic culture of always overcoming the obstacle or always doing that. There's I don't know. I mean I'm maybe I am just like one. I'm not thought it either. I don't know. <laughs> take a take a break. Anyways.